Can you pick up ham operators on a cheap shortwave receiver? The answer is yes, but only with a special piece of equipment. You might have read about things called beep frequency oscillators or BFOs. You might have even seen other videos describing how they operate. Well, this one's a little bit different. Even though your receiver might drift, you'll still stay on frequency and be able to resolve what is being said. Let's take a look inside. It's one transistor and you'll see a blue thing which is a ceramic resonator on 3.58 MHz. Now the problem with this is that although the ceramic resonator is pulled in frequency, it doesn't quite cover the whole amateur bands. So there'll be some frequencies that you won't be able to use with this BFO. Well the first challenge with a cheap receiver is how do you find 40 meters? You see often they've got a band that's many megahertz wide. 40 meters might only be a few millimeters on the dial. Well luckily with the BFO you set it to a frequency like 3.6 megahertz. You turn it on, you tune across and you hear a strong signal. In this case, as we're tuning 40 meters, it's 3.6 times 2 or 7.2 megahertz. Now, you can only do this with a signal frequency BFO. If it's a 455 kilohertz BFO, you won't be able to do this, unless you happen to be on a, a harmonic. Let's take a listen and see how good this thing really is. It so happens there's a contest this weekend, so there should be plenty of DX. We crank up the volume and try and find some duck talk. Here we are. Now the BFO. We tune the BFO until we can understand the signal. Now if the signal is really strong, you need a high BFO injection. In other words, you move the BFO near the receiver. If it's not so strong, you move it further away. And now we have an American station in that calling. Now a disadvantage of a signal frequency BFO is when you want to change the tuning on the receiver you also have to adjust the BFO to catch up. Now what happens if the receiver drifts? We're just adjusting the tuning knob to simulate that. As you can hear, the signal remains intelligible. That is unless it drifts so bad that it gets outside the pass band. In that case, you should buy a new receiver. Now, the other great thing about having the BFO at the signal frequency rather than the uh, 455 kilohertz is tuning these receivers, with, they don't, often don't have a fine tuning control, and even then, it can be quite hard, plus they drift. Now in this case, the sensitive tuning is done on the BFO, not the receiver. So it's a whole lot easier to do your tuning. In this case, the BFO covers around 100 kilohertz on 80 meters and 200 kilohertz on 40 meters. Therefore, 200 kilohertz is that versus a few millimetres on the dial. So it's much, much easier to tune. Now this particular BFO 
uses a ceramic resonator on 3.58 MHz. In a one transistor oscillator circuit, it can be pulled over about 100 kHz range. You can double that for 40 meters, and on 20 meters, it's about a 400 kHz range, or most of the voice section of the band. The idea is that you do your main tuning on the BFO and then follow along on your receiver. If you are skilled, you can have the tuning as a two-handed affair. Have your best hand on the BFO and your less able hand on the receiver tuning knob. Now you might think I'm using a, uh, a big antenna to uh, hear some of this DX. Well I'm not. All it is is a few metres of wire attached to the top of the uh, telescopic antenna. All indoors. In this case I'm using a ceramic resonator oscillator as it's easy to build something that's stable enough for this purpose in just a one transistor circuit. But if you're good at building VFOs and don't mind a bit of extra complexity, say a few buffer stages and some better shielding, then the VFO will be a bit more versatile and you can cover the whole band. Or if you've got a signal generator on the bench that doesn't get much use, well, you can just use that. You don't need to build a, a separate oscillator. So that's our look at signal frequency beat frequency oscillators. Their advantage is that the tuning in the receiver can drift, but the BFO remains stable, and the signal you're listening to will also remain stable and in tune. Secondly, the tuning is spread over a much larger rotation than the very fiddly tuning on the receiver. So it's a lot easier to tune signals in. Thirdly, you can alter the injection of the BFO by separating it from the receiver. The disadvantages? Well, unless you've got a wide range VFO, you're restricted to only some amateur bands and even those, not all frequencies will be covered. Secondly, your tuning is a two-handed process. You need to tune both the BFO and the receiver as you scan the band. But overall, if you want the best reception on a consumer-grade receiver, the tune frequency BFO is the way to go.